All right, so let's get this show started. Welcome to FanFest, and uh, welcome to Iceland for those of you that flew all the way up here for this. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the EVE engine and uh, what my team, Team R&B, is working on. Uh, I'm a software architect there leading the team. Uh, there's four of us in the team, uh, another graphics programmer, uh, QA engineer, and uh, a fourth programmer. And uh, personally, I've been working for CCP now for over seven years, uh, mostly on low-level stuff, low-level rendering, and uh, that's exactly what this team works on. So let's just get started on it. Uh, anyone ever seen anything like this while you're playing EVE? It is a sad fact of life. It does happen much more than we would like to, and we are trying to do something about it. Maybe even this. And uh, sometimes the display drivers act up, and uh, of course we all blame Eve for that. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, the display drivers themselves. Uh, maybe you've even seen low frame rates in Eve. Yeah. And uh, when you go on the forums and complain about this or you send in bug reports, uh, too often the response you get is something like this. And th that's not just uh, our easy way out of uh, not dealing with the problem. It's unfortunately, it happens way too often that we just cannot see the problem. And fixing problems that you cannot experience yourself, unfortunately, can be kind of tricky. And we really do hate that as much as you do. And so what we're trying to do is, well, improve on that situation. But uh, part of the problem is simply all these different configurations that uh, we're running on, all the different flavors of Windows from Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and uh, also all the different graphics hardware you're running on. And uh, then these uh, graphics cars, they come with different versions of drivers. Some, some people are uh, religious about it, keeping their drivers up to date. Some people maybe less so. Sometimes you're running on a laptop that uh, the hardware render doesn't even give you updates all that frequently. And don't forget the Mac also, where we have the added complication of we're running on top of an emulation layer on top of various different OS versions and uh, graphics hardware versions. And uh, we've counted uh, 855 different GPUs in use by EVE players. And that's, you know, just the different hardware. That's not even including all the uh, different OS versions. How much memory do you have in your machine? What hard disks or uh, SSDs you have or, or whatnot. So the unfortunate reality is that we cannot test all these configurations. Uh, as much as we'd like to, even if we had the hardware and had all these uh, configurations set up in-house, we still wouldn't even wouldn't have the manpower to, uh, to run the EVE client, test all the features we're changing or uh, all the features we're adding or when we're optimizing stuff. So uh, just cannot do it as much as we would like to. So. What my team is working on is uh, what we've dubbed the EVE probe. And, uh, you know, you, you'll see this slide is kind of uh, plain and simple. I really wanted to have some uh, nice logo designed here to present our app. And so, you know, what comes to mind for the word probe? Yeah, so <laughs> all sorts of things come to mind, but, uh, you know, if you try and stay away from the uh, maybe sci-fi cult movie connotations. I simply went on Google search to begin with and, uh, you know, do image search, safe image search. <laughs> and the uh, first thing that comes up is uh, this. Actually, the first full page of results is uh, pictures of the Ford probe, so really not much of a help there in getting some inspiration for a logo. So scrolling down the page a bit, uh, at least I get to some more uh, something that looks a bit scientific. You know, could be used for measuring things. 
And uh, you know, we have all sorts of uh, measuring devices. Uh, these are all sorts of different probes. Uh, actually, still further down, we at least get to a space probe. And you know, that's maybe something that we could use for an inspiration. That's at least get getting us in the right territory. But uh, sort of all joking aside, though, we, we feel this name is apt for what we're doing here because we are coming up with a way of measuring the performance of the EVE engine and measuring it specifically on all these different hardware and software configurations. So really, uh, to get into a bit more detail about what is EVE Probe, it's a standalone application where we use the graphics engine from EVE and uh, run the same C++ code, run the same engine. Uh, we're not using the game logic from EVE. We're, we've isolated that away. And uh, using this as a test bed for optimizations and new features. And this is something that we want uh, you to actually run on your own machines. And what it does simply is uh, we play back through scenes that we author, so we know the content that is being run in the engine, we know exactly what it is. We know it's exactly the same every time. So we can do an update to the engine. We can verify, does, that, does this uh, scene that we play through, does that still run OK? Does it crash? Does it give better performance, worse performance? And uh, very importantly, it's always, when you run it twice consecutively, you get the exact same results because the same things are being shown on the scene. And so this is just a video capture that I took from uh, our app as it was earlier in the week. Uh, the uh, glitches in the playback I blame on the video capture, or on the video playback, rather. Uh, so you know, you'll see it starts out as a, just a very simple scene in space, a few ships on, s on screen. We build up to a higher number of uh, ships switching LEDs and uh, just doing what the graphics engine is doing and uh, ending in a, a big fight. Everybody shooting at each other and uh, things exploding. That's what you really want to see in EVE, right? So, you know, we're basically hoping to employ crowdsourcing where you help us test not in a way where you know you have to start up Eve, you know, run the log server first, do the, all these uh, gazillion different steps, then send us back a bug report with details of what you did and uh, how everything is set up on your computer and uh, all that sort of thing. Just uh, an app that you download, you run, you can leave unattended. It it runs, plays through uh, scenes like this, and uh, sends data back to us where we then get vastly increased, increased coverage. Uh, if you ever worked with a software developer or you know, if you write code yourself, you may have heard or even uttered the words, it works on my machine when it crashes on somebody else's machine or doesn't do what it's supposed to. So we really want to get away from that and you know, be able to say it works on your machine. So. The idea is that uh, any engine updates, whether it's uh, a new graphical feature or even non-graphical feature or any optimization, uh, we put that into Eve Probe. We send out an update. Hopefully, we get as many of you as we can to download it, run it. That gives us feedback. And uh, the result is that when that feature or optimization goes out into the Eve client, it has actually been tested on your machine. And so you know, we get performance data sent back to our server, uh, data on frame time and memory use and, uh, and more things, uh, like load times and uh, other stuff. And we get all the uh, machine specs. So we can correlate you know, how, how well does this run on your GPU versus some L other GPUs. Uh, if there are some anomalies that only show up on certain uh, OS versions, that would show up here. Uh, but uh, you know, we're not looking to have any user identifiable data in there. If anybody is worried about that sort of thing, this is really just for us to get performance and stability improvements into the engine. 
And from this data, we can uh, then create a report that allows us to compare one version of the engine to another. Uh, this is just sort of some random graphs that I, we put together here. Uh, we don't have actual, I uh, don't have much actual data to play with yet, but uh, uh, hopefully we will get that, get that soon. So maybe uh, more in general on performance optimizations. Uh, it can often be tricky to do optimizations where you make changes and uh, that you know, speeds things up a lot on uh, your machine. Then you go and run it on some other machine that has uh, maybe a different GPU. We often get blamed for uh, only running on NVIDIA cards. And maybe that is partially true, but uh, we uh, in my team, we actually all have uh, dual cards in our machine, so we do try and test, but uh, still we're only testing on, on two different cards. Uh, with the EVE probe, we can make the optimization. We can have everybody in-house really just quickly at a click of a button run this. And uh, uh, we're also hoping to get the process for this so that we can even iterate on updating uh, daily or, or, or multiple times a day and send it out to you, the players. So this gives us a good way of testing anything we do across different configurations. And uh, yeah, we're actually already using this internally for improving our process. So starting to use this for automated tests, where we, we have a, a, it's a small, but it is a test lab where we have different uh, setups and we're running stuff on there. And so have already used this successfully for uh, identifying a driver crash where uh, for the first time I was able to <coughs> reliably get a, I run something on my machine and it blue screens every time instead of uh, you know hoping to get the right setup in a Eve client so that it, I would be able to reproduce something that uh, had been reported to us on the forums. And the best thing about uh, reproducible cases like that is that we can put in a fix and we can try it and we can say, yes, it did actually fix things. Uh, we, especially on my team, we often are tempted to put in patch notes and that usually gets vetoed by Eve community. We're tempted to put in you know, a possible fix for this or that crash bug or uh, an attempt to fix that. And so often you'll see a very vague description of something that we did that because we don't know if it fixed anything. Uh, the Eve probe should help us. Uh, so you know, we'll, we'll be able to put <laughs> crash fixes with more confidence in the patch notes. And uh, we're also using this ourselves just in our day-to-day -day work when doing optimizations, uh, where you know, we have now something that is much easier to measure. Uh, we can play back the same scene, uh, and the iteration time thus is uh, decreased. So this should result in more and better optimizations in the future. But uh, the uh, maybe more serious issue is when something we do actually crashes, not just runs uh, not as fast as we would like. So getting crash dumps, um, yeah, I'm the Eve client basically has a crash. Uh, crash handling built in so that uh, we gather a, a mini dump that is sent up to our server uh, when the Eve client crashes. And of course, that is built into the Eve probe as well. The problem with uh, a lot of generic Eve client crashes is that we don't know the context. We, we don't know exactly what you were doing at the time when it crashed. So the crash dump may uh, show us good info, but uh, without the context, it uh, can be kind of useless. So uh, again, the Eve probe, since we know exactly what is running and it is repeatable, we, and we build into the crash reporting also, we periodically tell it you know, what states we're in. So we know exactly what is on the screen and can correlate that to the crash dump. And hopefully, that'll give us more info to go on to actually find the issue and fix the bug. And uh, also, having a quicker iteration time on the engine. Uh, if somebody experiences a crash in Eve probe, we can uh, 
put in a t an attempt for a fix, put up a, a new version, and have that, uh, and have you uh, try it again for us. Verify if, if even if it's something that we couldn't verify on our our setup, maybe we don't have your uh, specific setup. And so iterating on it within EVPROBE uh, helps us fix those kind of bugs. And uh, it is, again, maybe a sad fact of life that uh, new or updated features are the biggest or the most frequent source of crashes. So we really want to get ahead of the curve with Eve Probe and uh, harden those features before they make it into the Eve client. So when we ship something in, a, uh, in, an, or in an update to the client, then uh, that feature has been thoroughly tested on uh, a much wider variety of hardware and uh, configurations. And uh, we're also, as I hinted at earlier, we can use this to test not just uh, graphical features. Uh, one thing we are introducing in the probe is uh, downloading resources on demand. So the uh, installer for this is actually quite small. It doesn't include any of the geometry or textures. It only includes uh, the, the binaries and the Python code. And uh, so this is something that is we hope to uh, employ in the Eve client in the not uh, too far future. But uh, it needs a lot of testing before we can take that step. So we found that also a perfect use case for Eve Pro. And that basically means, uh, it, in the extreme, we could use this so that uh, you, you basically would have the Eve client without any resources. You start it up, it only fetches over the internet what you're actually using. So you go into scene, uh, go into space without anything on disk that uh, is required for rendering those ships, and it just pulls down whatever you need. But uh, yeah, we don't know how that will affect your load times. You know, is that really feasible in large fights? Uh, does it mean uh, a lot more bandwidth use? Does that mean more cost for us on, on our end? Uh, we hope to be able to answer that sort of questions by putting it out in the probe and not messing with the EVE client until we have uh, stabilized everything there. And of course, we can uh, mitigate all sorts of uh, issues, uh, uh, resources would only be downloaded once, of course. Everything is cached locally, and uh, we can precede that uh, cache. But um, again, this is something that uh, we can we really hope to prove out in the Eve Pro before uh, changing anything in the Eve client. Yeah, but um, I think I'll switch gears a little bit now. I uh, want to talk about sort of our ways of monitoring the health of the Eve client. So uh, basically, yeah, talking about the Eve client as it is today and not the Eve probe that is uh, coming out soon. Uh, so I mentioned uh, that we gather crash dumps. So you know, when you get that uh, nasty dialog on uh, on your screen that Eve has crashed, and uh, uh, we get an, uh, a crash dump sent to us. We gather all those dumps and we process them. Uh, we figure out what the call stack is for each crash. Then we uh, basically keep a, a top 10 list or a hit list of you know what are the most frequently occurring crashes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'm not really proud of those numbers, but uh, so what we're seeing there is that we're getting, uh, on average, about a 1,000 crash dumps a day. Uh, it generally, though, lately has been trending downwards nicely, so you know things are improving. Uh, and this is something that we check frequently. Uh, anytime there is a new release, whether it's a major expansion or a point release or or just a, s a small client patch, we closely monitor this. And uh, whenever a new crash comes up, then uh, we you know, try and fix that as quickly as we can. Unfortunately, some of these are you know, lingering crashes. We don't have enough context. We can't reproduce them internally. Uh, some of them, 
some of them only occur on Linux, so there's only so much time we can dedicate to fixing those, although we, we do try. Uh, on aside from the, the crash dumps that we uh, analyze and look at call stacks for, we you know, just have uh, crash metrics. Uh, in addition to those uh, thousand crash dumps we get per day, we actually have, on average, about uh, yeah, twelve to fifteen thousand uh, suspected crashes, or something where the client did not exit cleanly. Uh, basically, when you start up the client, a file is saved out to disk. Uh, we st store a session file. Uh, when you exit cleanly, that session file is cleaned up. Uh, so next time you start up a client, it looks for the existence of those files. If it is there, then that's a hint that uh, something crashed. With maybe we get a crash dump, maybe not. So this is our way of monitoring that. And you'll see that uh, over the last year, we've had a, a lot of spikes. The blue line there is uh, those suspected crashes. Had a lot of spikes in those. I uh, finally figured out what the hell was going on with that. It's Simply uh, starting up a, a non-patched client actually uh, registered as a non-clean exit. So uh, in the last few months, that graph finally settled a bit. Uh, it is trending downwards, as you can see, but uh, still way higher than I would like. Uh, so again, you know, this is uh, looking at this sort of thing is what uh, prompted us to start thinking about what can we do about it, and hence uh, Eve Probe. Uh, if we look a little bit more closely at this, you know, taking out the, uh, uh, the blue line, just focusing on crash dumps that we do receive. Uh, again, it has been trending downwards nicely. Uh, around uh, Rubicon 1.0, though, there is a, a huge spike. Uh, this partially is, this is when we introduced uh, DirectX 11 version of the client, so maybe to be expected. There was a lot of new code that hadn't been run on all these different hardware configurations that started running. But uh, we also put in a, a freeze detection, where basically we were monitoring if the client, without properly crashing, it was just hanging for more than 30 seconds, then that would induce a crash. Uh, that this was just enabled for a couple of days before we turned it off, just to give us an idea of what the state was with the freezes. Uh, since then, we found that a good chunk of those freezes were actually on startup. There's a process there that unfortunately takes a long time, so these are annoying, but uh, not maybe relevant. Uh, you know, they, they weren't as bad as uh, this makes it look. And uh, since then, we've re-enabled the freeze detection, but they're not treated as crashes anymore. We, we look at them separately. And so these freezes, often they do recover. So you know your machine just stalls for a long time, then it actually keeps on playing. And uh, a good portion of that is on startup, as I said. Uh, the second spike that we see there was a UI rendering issue that uh, unfortunately was introduced, only affected a certain class of video cards. Uh, but uh, getting uh, data like this allowed us to, well, quickly identify a, that there is a problem, and uh, from the crash dumps, we were able to figure out what was going on. And uh, we do actually, we used a very er early version of uh, the Eve probe uh, to, yeah, to reproduce the problem, and we're able to verify the fix with that in-house. Uh, so w with all this crash data, we can categorize it by, you know, what uh, what platform you're running on. Uh, so for example, here's uh, the crashes on the Mac specifically. Uh, again, you know, this we're seeing way too many crashes on the Mac, but uh, at least it has been trending quite nicely downwards. So on to uh, performance metrics. We already have in the client. It gathers a lot of performance data, like frame times and memory use and so on, uh, similar to what, we're, uh, what we aim to do with the probe. But uh, again, uh, this is data coming from the client, so this is already sort of after the fact. This is our way of monitoring how the EVE client is doing. 
And with Eve Probe, we really want to break ahead of the curve. And for example, to avoid things like this, where we recently yeah, had some uh, fairly fundamental changes in low-level stuff that unfortunately introduced uh, a memory leak. And uh, uh, you can see this is the uh, yeah, it's a certain category of memory. This is uh, anything that the C++ code allocates directly uh, has been very stable. Well, this graph only goes back to December, but uh, I was looking at just to show that spike there more clearly. I limited to that. Uh, this has been very stable for the last year or so. So I guess we were also just getting a bit complacent, uh, not checking this as religiously after every release. So it took us a couple of days to notice. Uh, or yeah, that uh, something was not really right. But a nice thing also is that yeah we saw some complaints on forums that you know my Eve client is using a lot more memory. We were able to go and verify that with our statistics, and uh, we were also able to since we basically all the data that we store or that we get sent from the client we store that basically forever and ever. So we we could go back and uh, introduce a new graph. Uh, then going back in time, basically, uh, uh, as far as we wanted. So in this case, we added a counter for how many sessions are run where the memory is above some set limit. And this just confirmed in a, a different way that, yes, this was a widespread problem uh, that yeah, a lot of people were seeing actual memory usage increase. And uh, those, uh, that sawtooth pattern on there is basically just uh, that corresponds to weekends, in case you're wondering. Because this is based on just counting sessions, and uh, Eve is more active on the weekends in general. Uh, another type of metric or that we graph is the frame times. And we can get the, uh, so th these are basically average frame times. Uh, this is just for uh, clients running DirectX 11. These are average frame times for three different types of GPUs. And so this is something that we can look at to verify, especially after larger patches, that uh, you know, things are uh, overall working as, they, as well as they were before. Um, here's the same graph for DirectX 9. It's interesting to note how, you know, the, this seems to be, there's, there are more spikes in this graph. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Uh, again, though, around Rubicon 1.0 is when we introduced DirectX 11. So a lot of, uh, a lot of players obviously moved over to DirectX 11. So the, uh, the blue line, that's actually, yeah, that's, uh, that's Intel cards. A lot of those Intel cards were actually they're running along with uh, NVIDIA. So it's an optimus setup where you have two video cards basically in your, in your machine. And it uh, switches per application. But uh, a lot of the early drivers for those cards, they didn't tell us about the NVIDIA card. They were basically, even though they were running on NVIDIA, they were representing themselves as, NVIDIA, as Intel cards. Sorry. So my guess is that performance got worse as all those people moved over to DirectX 11. So, uh, <coughs> here's another graph that I find kind of interesting. Uh, the, uh, it's basically memory use, the total memory use as reported by Windows on average. So, this is basically average for every session uh, across the board. Uh, but uh, if we look at the blue line is for players running under DirectX 9, and the red line is for running under DirectX 11. So uh, we are actually using significantly less memory under DirectX 11. So, and also, if you remember the crashes graph that I showed you earlier, we DirectX, or we have gotten crashes back to the same level as they were before the update to DirectX 11. So if you switched over to DirectX 9 manually, even though your machine can run DirectX 11. And uh, 
you know, you probably want to consider switching back, at least giving it a try. We have improved the stability a lot, and uh, you do use more, uh, you get more memory. So, uh, especially if you're running more than one client, it's definitely worth trying. Uh, so, we also, you know, we have sort of an aggregate of the average frame times, and yeah, I should note here that these, these are frame times, not frames per second, so a lower number is better, uh, frame times in milliseconds. And uh, so, uh, yeah, w we uh, use this uh, graph. This is a good indicator of the overall health, the overall performance health of the EVE client. Where, uh, <coughs> but uh, interestingly enough, you have these huge spikes on the uh, frame times, and those seem to correspond with uh, large fleet fights in EVE. So, you know, if you have uh, thousands of people with thousands of ships in the scene, everybody is suddenly reporting a much worse uh, frame rate. And again, this is where we introduced DirectX 11 and all these uh, all the players that were on the more higher-end machines, they moved over to DirectX 11. And it's not like we changed anything drastically in uh, DirectX 9. It's just that the machines are now not as powerful. So, yeah, I hope you can see that you know, we have a lot of data that we, can, uh, that we gather from the client, and we have lots of ways to looking at that data, and we're, we're really trying to use that data to guide us in our work on uh, what needs to be done and you know, what things should be done to improve the EVE client. And uh, I think I remember correctly that we gather around between five and six million log lines per day that just have to do with client performance. And uh, again, we store all that data. It just keeps piling up. It's and so we can, if we think of new ways of uh, analyzing that data, we can always go back and uh, run that analysis over. Well, uh, we've been gathering this sort of data now for going on three years. So Lots of interesting stuff there. So especially if you're interested in big data, we're definitely getting into that territory. But uh, I'm sort of getting to the end here with my slide deck. And uh, really just wanted to reiterate that uh, what we're doing with Eve Probe is what we're s hoping to uh, will lead to a better Eve for everybody. And uh, that we're really trying to change from being reactive and looking at these sort of graphs after the fact, after everything has shipped out and uh, is running on your, in your Eve clients. We're hoping to move that to, you know, all these problems should have been resolved in Eve Pro before ever making it into the game. And uh, yeah, so I want to open up to questions if anybody has any. There's, uh, there are mics on the sides, so please use those so uh, everybody can hear. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my question was, does uh, this offer optimization possibilities? So when you run this, is it possible that we would get a report back saying, hey, your computer is not optimizing these features. You could be turning this up, or you should turn this down and get better results. Uh, we definitely plan to evolve this into uh, that this would be a way of uh, setting graphic settings within EVE automatically, yes, or at least sort of suggest, you know, yes, this is how you should set it. Of course, people want to have maybe different settings for uh, depending on how they play the game. So how we would deal with that, we're not sure. But uh, yes, this. Since we are using the Eve engine, we know, you know, whatever we measure is, we're first and foremost measuring our performance, and so we can definitely use this to guide how we set settings in Eve. Go ahead. Hello, um, I have a true UI SLI system. Yeah. And uh, all the three GPUs are using 
since DirectX 11. And before DirectX 9, I uh, only two GPUs were using. That's cool, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, coming from a software background, I know the value of automated testing at least. And this, while well, Eve, Eve Probe looks really great and uh, providing you feedback, I was wondering if you'll have a, some, some facility in it to enable it to run automatically, like easy for the user to download and say, run this every night at 3 a.m. or something like that. It can process a few scenes and send you feedback? Uh, will it be purely interactive? The first iteration will be interactive, but uh, sort of, you know, you download it and you click something to run it. There's no interaction required from you, per se. Uh, but th that's definitely something we w would like to explore, yes. Uh, you know, anything that makes it easy for you to, you know, to run these sort of tests for us, you know, that can only help improve uh, the EVE client, so. Hi. Um, you talked about the possibility of uh, pushing multiple updates per date. So if you don't run the EVE for three days, will it only run the latest data pack, or will it say, okay, the last version of data that I ran was from four days ago, and there are 64 updates in between, and now I'm running the 64 updates and report every one of them, or will it just run the uh, current at the moment? The idea was to always just run the most current, but uh, that's actually... Maybe there might be value in uh, allowing it to go back versions. Uh, that's just something we should consider. And the other thing is, could we get that as a screensaver? <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned that uh, well, last week. Well, not, not, not only from the visual point of view, yeah. but uh, like uh, if I go <laughs> leave my computer for 10 yeah. minutes, the screensaver comes up and it starts running Eve Probe and sends you feedback and I think that's a great idea. We'll explore that. I'm sorry? Yeah, so this content is, you know, very early, you know, don't read too much into that content. But uh, the idea is that, you know, we will, the purpose of this is first and foremost to measure things, but we, you know, anything we send out of house, obviously, we like it to be impressive and interesting to look at. So. I'll be sure to make note of those remarks. Go ahead. Uh, Two-part question. Uh, the data we are basically replaying on the probe are live data, batch data. Mm -hmm. What kind of data is it uh, provided to probe to analyze and to uh, measure performance of? Uh, so these are basically scenes we're playing back just through our engine. So, you know, this is just animation data, so on. So, and then we're, you know, we're mostly just looking at measuring time and uh, then querying, you know, how much memory is in use and, and so on. Mm -hmm. no, because I was thinking about uh, something to, to play, to be running besides the client. I mean, in 6VDT or uh, Asakai or something like that, that can uh, also reproduce uh, with your metric system besides what the client sees mm -hmm. on another machine, for example. Uh, yeah, so that would be uh, way further down the road. <laughs> oh, okay. And the second half is, you briefly mentioned Linux. And uh, I am from that com a community, and I thank for the fixes you do, and uh, specifically the T3 that was a allowed us to, to play, yeah. and uh, it makes sense to use Eve Probe in Linux, or it's not interesting data for you? Uh, we definitely want to you know, have the Eve Probe well, on the Mac as well as on Windows, and uh, I would hope that it would work under Wine on Linux as well as, it, as well as the Eve client does. So we will. So, you know, Linux is not an officially supported platform, so I can't officially promise anything, but... Uh, of course, of course, we know. <laughs> my, my laptop has Linux installed on it. Let's leave it at that. Thanks. Go ahead. So, can we get uh, nice rewards for running it? 
uh, I'll be sure to suggest that. Uh, that is out of, out of my control, but uh, that's not a bad idea. Uh, we definitely want you know, to encourage everybody to run this. Ultimately, we want to make this very easy and quick and painless for you guys because you know, that will help us improve the engine and that benefits you. So if that's not enough reward, we'll figure something out. <laughs> will it give us some sort of a score at the end or a list of recognized hardware? Well, it says, oh, you've got this video card, you've got this chipset, CPU, this much memory, and a score so we can <laughs> compare with other people. Ha ha, I've got an 11. <laughs> there are no plans of that. Uh, we've just been focusing on, you know, what data can it give us? Uh, giving a score and, you know, having some sort of a scoreboard, that's something maybe to discuss in the future, but uh, there's no plans for that. Um, you thought you playing scenes um, in these tests, what you're doing there. Um, the mostly problems I see is in the session change, if you are jumping or docking or undocking or doing some things, then on the most PCs I know, um, crashing E for I crash the driver. So if this is integrated in these tests, or is it only like we see it here, flights and fights and... Yeah, so what we've found actually on like two recent crash bugs, one was a driver crash, one was a, you know, the game crashing. Uh, were happening on session changes, and those had to do with uh, you know setting up the scene initially. They were actually graphics problems, even though you know sometimes we'd suspect they might be related to networking or any other things. So we're hoping that uh, this setup will help a lot in detecting those kind of things because we now have a much more controlled way of how the scene is set up, and there have been like. Have been bugs where we, you know, something wasn't properly initialized. So on the first frame, when something was rendered, then uh, on certain drivers, things would crash where other drivers would just, you know, not draw something. And it's very hard to see if you, you know, something is not drawn for one frame. Uh, you may just discount that as uh, some random glitch, or it's also since everything is loaded asynchronously, and a lot of things don't start rendering until they have finished loading. So. <laughs> A lot of these uh, session change bugs have to do with the initial setup of the scene. And uh, with Eve Probe, we actually have a much more controlled initial setup. And we also separate the, the loading. We use the same async loading mechanism, but uh, we then don't start rendering anything until it actually has finished loading. So you know, we hope this will help address a lot of those issues. The question is, when is uh, this program going to be released? When it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Estimated. Uh, but uh, we're hoping to have, say, within two or three months, we would have uh, the first release. OK. Another question. Uh, you were mentioning um, uh, anonymous data. So everything is sent anonymously. Is there a way of, uh, if you have issues, to, uh, for some way to link it to a bug report or whatever? Uh, <coughs> yeah, we will find some ways of doing that, you know, so, because we, uh, I want to be able to get into a, an iteration loop with a specific person, you know, if, if you run this on your machine and you get a crash, do you have a, a quick way of getting in touch with us and we can try out something and even send you just personally a, a new version before we yeah. make a full build for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we don't have all the details on how we will do that, but uh, we will have some ways of doing that, yes. Thank you. Uh, hi. I just hi. wanted to ask, uh, w are you guys planning on doing any kind of like an A-B testing where only like half the community gets some of the updates and, and or, uh, the, the EVE probe and, compare it, and then comparing that information back and seeing how you can... We might rather do A-B testing where we have you know, two scenes you know, playing one after the other where we try out a different approach and then we get on everybody's machine, we get sort of that A-B, you know, where we try out two different approaches for an optimization or, uh, or something. And uh, yeah, separating this out from the EVE client makes it much easier for us to do that sort of thing. Hello. 
Like. I would like to know if uh, you plan later to also investigate render issue with this tool on only focus on performance and crashes. So initially this will probably you know, uh, be primarily used to weed out those sort of issues, but uh, I really would like to see this become sort of the tool that we all, the graphics programmers that we use to you know, nothing gets into the client before it has had a round in the uh, Eve probe. But uh, you know, it'll sort of, it'll be a gradual change to get to that state. And uh, but uh, you know, that just allows us to really put much better tested features into the game itself. So, any more questions? I think we're also pretty much out of time anyway. So. Thank you.